Father Philip, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, so as the Dean of the Philosophy Department at the Pontifical Lateran University here in Rome, um, can you tell us what is artificial intelligence and how did you first get involved in this field? Artificial intelligence is a series of algorithms that use logical calculations in order to achieve program results. So that is a little bit of a, a, a simplification of what this uh, what this software is actually doing, but I do think it responds to the nature of uh, uh, of what the machine is 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 doing. Perhaps artificial intelligence is not the best word mm -hmm. that that we have to describe uh, these calculations, mm -hmm. but it came about in 1956 with John McCarthy in Dartmouth in New Hampshire, who organized a conference. Mm -hmm on machine technology. And 1956, this mm -hmm. was obviously a yeah, very, a very, ago. it was it was very primitive mm -hmm. technology at the time. But because they were able to construct a Turing machine, which uses ones and zeros in a symbolic language to uh, refer to truth and, and false, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to uh, make a machine uh, use logic as wow. human beings do. Now, <clears throat> this was impressive, and what the machines can do today is impressive, but I wouldn't call it intelligence. I would mm -hmm. call it something else. But the name stuck, and, and now mm -hmm. we, we're all talking about artificial intelligence. Yeah. And Father, since um, your book, Artificial Humanity, that came out in 2019, um, and I remember reading it and being very fascinated um, by the questions that you're posing and the way that you're thinking about how this is going to change the way we relate to one another, the, the, the change of society. Since 2019, now in 2023, so much has happened. Um, what, what has caused this change? I think that the large platforms are developing uh, the, these technologies at an uh, increasingly uh, fast rate. The, the, the most famous and the best program out there now is ChatGPT, which is the uh, artificial intelligence project of OpenAI. Uh, however, there are other programs coming out mm -hmm. within a few months, and, and I've been told uh, when I was in San Francisco uh, two months ago that these programs are going to make ChatGPT look like, uh, uh, like primitive software. Wow, they're 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 go they're going to be more powerful and in and 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 be able to do more things mm -hmm. than GPT. Wow. But GPT, we all know about it. We all use it, uh, and even my students. Uh, and and so that I think is a, an example of a powerful artificial intelligence mm -hmm. program uh, that has practical applications. Yeah. And Father, I want to share a, a kind of a funny story, kind of funny but also kind of depressing story. Um, I was talking to one of my friends who goes to MIT, and he was telling me about a classroom where these, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, you know, nerds, you know, very, very brilliant, you know, <laughs> guys, and who are able to work on, on mathematical problems, and they really find the artistic beauty of of the the mathematical computation. But of course, engaging with with a girl or with, you know is, is something that's kind of outside their their realm. So the the I think it was a psychology teacher ask them to go and make make, make an encounter with someone at, at a restaurant, bar, whatever, and, and, and start a communication and to kind of work on human communication and also think about it in terms of mathematical terms. Well, the students, apparently, from the story that I heard, they, <laughs> they, they got a number and then they started texting that person and started a relationship. But what the, the professor found out is that they were using chat GPT to come up with responses to those, um, to those text messages. And what the uh, professor also found out is that the girl or the girls on the other side were using ChatGPT to respond to them. <laughs> so you had two AI systems communicating with one another. Yeah. And yeah. for me, like that really symbolizes, I guess, the, the beautiful aspect of artificial intelligence, which allows us to, to communicate, to have conversations, to solve problems, but then also the fact that the human very much at that point is out of the loop. I mean, they're, they're not solving the problem. They're not confronting reality. Yeah. What do you think? I, I, that's not healthy. I, I don't think that's healthy. Uh, Spike Jones made a movie years ago called Her yeah. with Joaquin Phoenix, yes. who falls in love with the voice of Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> yeah. which is his um, yeah. you know, operating system. Yeah. And I think that was a prophetic movie. Uh, yeah. You know, Joaquin Phoenix plays the character of someone who has difficulties mm -hmm. relating to women mm -hmm. and then finds that the, the mm -hmm. relating to this artificial intelligence mm -hmm. is much easier for him. Mm -hmm. And of course, the the the, the in artificial intelligence learns how to make Joaquin Phoenix uh, fall in love yeah. with her, and and then at the end she leaves him, which is 
I think, kind of a, 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 pro, a prophetic message also. Mm -hmm. um, let's not be too enamored with the technology mm -hmm. to an extent that we end up being sad and we end up uh, mm -hmm. losing right. uh, part, part of our uh, yeah. uh, humanness. And uh, our humanity. agency also, our ability to, to survive. Because, Father, um, in, the, in the news these days, there's a lot of fear and, and something that we've, we've spoken about. Um, and I... I I, I, I fear sometimes that if the technology gets ahead of us to a certain point and those alignments, those those objectives that you know human flourishing is not at the center of this technology, then then you know we could have very serious problems. W you know when when that's the conversation that's happening you know in the media right now. What what do you see? What do you what gives you hope? But at the same time, what are you genuinely preoccupied? Uh, the the problem is about control. Uh, how much control do we have over over these uh, th these programs, basically? And in GPT, the G stands for generative. Mm -hmm. So what's taking place is that it, it, these artificial intelligence are learning, if we want to use that word, mm -hmm. uh, and they're growing and they're expanding on their own in a way that we don't even know how to map out. Mm -hmm. So even the engineers aren't sure how GPT is solving some of the problems that they, they give it. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the other day, uh, there was a news item that GTP learned chemistry oh. on its own. The, the, the engineers didn't plug in, you know, uh, the periodical table of, 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 so of elements learn? and what it, it, it because it, it accesses information on the Internet. Okay. And, it, and then also uh, the GPT is built for dialogue. Uh, so let me give you an example. Um, I, I asked GPT to write me a, a short essay of the concept of soul in St. Thomas Aquinas. Now. I'm pretty familiar with the content of Aquinas' vision on the soul, so I, I knew whether or not it, it was going to be accurate, and it was very accurate. Really? And then I, I, said, to, I said to GPT, okay, uh, Aquinas speaks of the soul in question 84 of the Summa Theologica. Can you add some quotations from that? And it did. And it was wow. right on. And then I said, Aquinas also wrote a, a treatise called De Anima, which is his commentary on Aristotle. I said, can you bring in some of those uh, ideas also? And it did. So what, what, what I did was I helped GPT to understand, uh, I, that's not the best word to use, but in, in order to develop concepts mm -hmm. that I wanted out of it. Now, the advantage is I've studied Aquinas for most of my life, so I, mm -hmm. I was very familiar with the, with the ideas. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, you have GPT at your disposal. Wow. Wow. And then, Father, when you... Um, so, by the way, Benjamin, I, I, I printed out the essay. I gave it to my professor of medieval philosophy. And I said, uh, what, what grade would you give this text? Uh, and he says, meh, B minus. Really? <laughs> Chat GPT got a B minus from my professor of medieval <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> so, and then I told him, I said, this was generated by an AI. No, an AI could never do something like this. And I said, try it. <laughs> try it. And he did. Wow. And he's scared. So let me just speak to that also because we were talking about are, are, should we be afraid of this? And I think the answer is yes and no. Uh, the potential, and, and when I spoke with Sam Altman about a month ago, he, he mentioned that this is something that, that concerns him. Mm -hmm. The potential use for harm or in, 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 a, in, a, in a, um, uh, an evil agent using this technology. And he says that is possible. And the ramifications of that, I'm not sure what they are, but the, the misuse of this technology is a real uh, reason for, for us to be concerned. I don't know if afraid is the right word, but concerned. I am also not afraid because I think that we are aware and that the people who are developing this technology, they are aware of the need to maintain control mm -hmm. over it. And so, so, Father, when you're in dialogue with people, you know, working at a very high level and making decisions on, on artificial intelligence, and you're also coming from your, your Christian background as a, as a priest and someone who's very focused on keeping, of course, the human at the center, you know, of society and, and kind of that Christian anthropology that, that, you know, is so important for us here um, to have human flourishing. How, how, when you're in dialogue with them, how are, you, how are your people, or is the church in general, able to embed those Christian ethics into this technology? How, how do those conversations go? Yeah, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's not easy. Um, 
you, 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 we can't really force our worldview on these people. But what I have found uh, w with uh, people like Sam Altman, but also Demis Hassabis, who is the director of Google DeepMind's um, AI project, that if, uh, if, if you frame the issue in the correct way, they are willing to be a part of a dialogue. Uh, Demis has been to the Vatican several times. Mm -hmm. Sam told me he's willing to come at the end of May. Wow. He's he's not sure about his traveling, but uh, there are several people that that I've already addressed wow. that w that are willing to speak with him. So we can, I think, we can become a part of mm -hmm. how they're developing this technology. Mm -hmm. So instead of calling Sam Altman an evil person, mm -hmm. what because he's not, mm -hmm. um, even though Elon Musk says that, but. Let's frame it with, within, within a uh, conceptual scheme of human flourishing. Sam, how can we make GPT help human beings flourish mm -hmm. and not the contrary? Mm -hmm. And he, he said, that sounds, that sounds like something I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that the more people that we speak with in the industry, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the, the, the more effect or the, 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 how can I say, the more influence we're going to have. And then, Father, when they're when they're speaking with you, and, and you know you're bringing them to the Vatican, for example, what is it that they're interested about when they come to the Vatican, or when they're engaged with you know people from the from the Catholic world? They're they they're they're primarily interested in Pope Francis. They you know they they um, yeah, everybody wants to meet Pope Francis, and uh, and I don't I don't think that's realistic. But I think that there are the key. Um, Mm -hmm. players in the Vatican, like mm -hmm. Monsignor Padia, like mm -hmm. Monsignor Paul Tai, mm -hmm. like uh, Cardinal Turkson, that can help mm -hmm. guide mm -hmm. the discourse on how to use these technologies to enhance human flourishing. Mm -hmm. um, it, because it's really not a question of good and evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a question of how can we support human beings? So like you said, Pope Francis has mentioned also, um, place the human being at mm -hmm. the center of the technology. Yeah. And so if these technologies are being used in, in order to harm human beings, mm -hmm. that's not good. Mm -hmm. And when I think the, the, I think what people look at the Vatican, the, the, the developers are looking at the Vatican for a moral mm -hmm. uh, guide and, 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 and a, a, a kind of moral authority. The Pope is mm -hmm. probably the number one moral authority in the world, is respected by Catholics and non-Catholics mm -hmm. alike. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a, a, a tremendous soft power, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and Pope Francis has his priorities also. Right now it's the Ukraine war and, and, mm -hmm. and, what, and you know that as well. Mm -hmm. But he also understands that he has to be a part of the dialogue as this technology moves forward. Well, Father, thank you so much for your time. This is fascinating. Great, great. Glad to, uh, to have explored some of these issues. Hope we can do it again.